Because we always say, Ya ibadi inni haram to dhulm ala nafsi wa ja'altu bainakum muharraman fala tadhalam. All my servants, I made injustice forbidden upon myself, and I make it forbidden amongst you, so do not be unjust to one another. But we're always doing injustice to each other. And we're always saying the hadith, and we're always doing injustice to each other. So there is a break, there is a disconnect. Is that we're not reflecting on what injustice is. So basically, when you take my turn in line, I don't know, I mean, it's, this is America. Uh, see, I need examples because I grew up in Egypt. So I, I bring my examples from Egypt. Uh, so when you're standing in line for food or something, because in Egypt you stand in line to get. Even here, you stand, if you check out from a grocery store or something, you stand in line. But in Egypt, the lines are bigger, longer. So when someone, you know, pushes their way in, in front of the lion or something, that is a form of injustice that prayful people do not recognize. That you have done injustice to like 26 or 7 people standing in the line. Because my turn is my right. Right or wrong? You, it, it's, it is time. You're wasting my time. My turn is my right. But our awareness has been too contracted that we think injustice is to make you bleed, is to actually, you know, wound you and, and, and make you bleed or to, to take your money out of your pocket or something like this. But I can trick you as much as I want in transactions, in sales or whatever transactions. I can use the worst work ethics with you. I could use the worst, you know, uh, the basically business ethics with you, and we do this often as Muslims, right? It's actually that we've become so, like, uh, averse to one another, right? Because, you know, you, you don't want to be working for a Muslim employer. He's just not going to pay you, and they're just going to give you, like, right or wrong. We do say this or not. It is sad, it is sad and, and really shameful. But I hear this from a lot of people. You know, I hear this from so, from so many people. How could, how, could, how, could they, how could we get there? Because basically, we're about technicalities. You know, you, you, you want the well, technicalities to affect, and you go to your own mufti and tell him the story. If you're practicing, if you're good enough, You'll be going to your mufti and telling the story, so this is the business dealing between me and my friend and so on. And he did this and I did that. And he, he, once you, you basically you grab the fatwa out of the mufti, uh, then you run with it and, and then you use it. But this hadith, it, you know, should give us a different perspective on the whole issue. <laughs> None of you will have faith until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. Until he loves for his brother. If you are a physician, if you are a physician, you will even study harder because you, you treat people, right? You want to treat, how, how would you like to be treated? By ignorant physicians? By reckless physicians? No. And if you love for your brother what you, or for the people what you love for yourself, then you're going to want to make sure that you are the best physician so that when you treat people, you're extending to the people that which you want to receive from them. It, it, it is just as simple as that. In everything you do, you are aware of this meaning. Let death not come to him except while having faith in Allah on the final day, and let him extend to the people that which he likes to receive from them. In every regard, in everything, you should do this. Otherwise, you will not have faith. I, I heard this example from one of our Mashaikh, he said, if you you know, if you, if you walk, walk out of your apartment building and you find the neighbor's, uh, neighbor's kids or kid or child 
And then you, you slap one of the kids of the neighbor. For some reason, you just get into an argument with the kid and you slap one of the kids of the neighbors. Or the other scenario, the other scenario, you, you, you're walking by the beach and you find one of the kids' neighbors or a stream of, of water, Torah, beach, anything. You're walking by and you find one of the kids of the neighbors drowning. And you jump in and you, you, you rescue them. Okay. Now, the next time you see those two neighbors, yeah, is that going to be the same? The neighbor that you slapped in the face of his child and the neighbor that you rescued his child from drowning? Are you going to be feeling the same? Is, is the interaction between you and the neighbor going to be the same? Alaysal khalq wa Allah aren't the, the creation, the people, all of the creation, the dependence of Allah. Isn't the, He his, their Lord, their Rabb, their Master, their caretaker? He is their caretaker. You know, even Rabb al-Bayt, the caretaker of the household, took the word Rabb from Rububiyyah. And Allah is the Rabb of, of all the creation. Well, khalq wa Allah and the creation are the dependence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So basically, when you shortchange his ayat, his dependence, when you transgress his dependence, when you humiliate or insult his dependence, how could you stand in prayer and meet him? How, how would you feel about the next prayer when you have wronged his dependence? Just like your neighbor, and to Allah belongs the most perfect example. But just like your neighbor, are, how are you going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the prayer after you have done this to his uh, creation or his dependence? 